Kuzangpo and welcome to our weekly news magazine Bhutan this week with me Sonomongi. Our top stories. The High Court sentenced the former Foreign Minister in Zindoji to one year prison for misusing a pool vehicle. The Cabinet has decided to merge BOIC with Bhutan Development Bank. And over 670 government vehicles have neither renewed nor verified their documents with the Road Safety and Transport Authority. The High Court bench once sentenced the former Foreign Minister Vinzin Doji to one year in prison on Thursday. He was charged for violating the Civil Service Act and Anti-Corruption Act by misusing the pool vehicle when he was the Den Hazonda. But he can pay 45,000 item in lieu of imprisonment. The former minister was also fined over 100,000 item for misusing the pool vehicle. The amount is to be paid within 10 days of the decision. The former minister used the pool vehicle for transportation of 10 trips of private timber from Ha to Thimpu. In June this year, the former foreign minister was acquitted by the Ha district court but was asked to pay 4,166 item as restitution for not being able to produce receipts for two trips. The government will merge BOIC with Bhutan Development Bank. This was revealed by the Foreign Minister Damsudoji at the National Graduates Orientation Program. The minister said it was decided by the cabinet. Services of 42 employees of the erstwhile Royal Education Council, including the Centenary Institute of Education in Yonfula, are to be discontinued from 1st October this year. The Royal Education Council office in Paro issued a notification to the employees on Tuesday. The notification does not specify the reasons, but says it is as per the internal Royal Education Council management meeting. The employees were shocked and disheartened with the notification. Most of them are worried about their future as the notification does not specify or guarantee employment after their services are discontinued. The offices were established in 2012 as an in-service education facility for continuous professional development for teachers. Around 15 million item was spent to establish the office. The 42 employees were recruited while the council functioned as an autonomous body. The Royal Education Council was merged with the Department of Curriculum Research and Development of the Education Ministry in December last year. The decision to discontinue the services of the employees was taken during the second council meeting in July, chaired by the Prime Minister along with seven other council members. And now the new REC is uh, under the purview of Royal Civil Service Commission and uh, now uh, the, uh, the former employees of REC in Thimpu and CIE Yonpula were mostly non-civil servants so uh, REC now under the civil, uh, Royal Civil Service Commission cannot uh, no, take them on regular basis. With regard to the Centenary Institute uh, of Education in Yonfula, uh, uh, as such, uh, uh, there is no plan to shut down or close uh, the institute. The economist's trade deficit has worsened in recent times, reaching 7.7 .7 billion item in June this year, which is roughly the size of the entire revenue generated by the hydropower sector. The deficit had remained at 2.1 billion item early this year. Bhutan's current account deficit with India, which is export minus import, increased from neutrum 2.1 billion in January to neutrum 7.7 .7 billion in June this year. This means imports increased significantly while exports remained more or less the same. Some experts say excessive lending by the financial institutions was the primary factor contributing to the increase in deficit. Local financial institutions lent out a total of 71.5 billion neutrum in the form of loans as of June this year. No, current account uh, deficit uh, is a concern. But what we need to understand is that uh, the, the primary cause of current account uh, deficit to an extent in our case of about 25% uh, of the GDP uh, is because as a nation we import almost everything and export very little. I think fundamentally this is the, uh, this is the challenge uh, we have. And unless we address this fundamental challenge of our economy, we would uh, result into current account uh, deficit. 
The minister, however, said the increase in the current account deficit at this rate was a cause of concern. If you look at uh, purely the commercial borrowing, where the private sector had borrowed from uh, our financial institutions, this has uh, increased from uh, 45.4 billion in 2013 to some 55.3 billion in 2014. So uh, probably this would have contributed to the current account uh, deficit as well. But I would look at it as uh, a positive trend, which means that our private sector, which means our businesses now have the confidence to get into businesses. However, he said increase in GDP growth rate, decrease in inflation and increase in trade volume were some of the signs of an economy recovering from rupee crunch in 2012. Nirav Gelson for BBS News. In what could be one of the worst flooding in Samrup Jonkar in recent years, a truck was washed away by the swollen Dungsamchu. The suspension bridge of the primary school was also washed away, closing the only route to the school. Fortunately, there are no reports of any casualties. The temporary bridge was built with support from the army wing in Dewatha and the Subs of Samrujonka. The bridge is the only means for the students to get across to the school. Following this incident, parents of the students shared that it would be convenient and safe if a motorable bridge could be constructed over the river. However, only one of them was willing to speak in front of the camera. The temporary bridge uh, which they have uh, constructed by Royal Bhutan Army and uh, Thomde has been uh, installed. But uh, I don't know how far it will work. La, because by just if heavy rain falls there up there, then there is uh, chances of uh, washing away again with the people, those who are crossing at the time. No? From my point of view, if they construct one uh, bridge, la, for a motorable bridge. So that will be much more convenient. So if they can take this issue on priority basis, this is not for now, but for future also it will be good. So if we can drop our children by doorway to the school. Tom, the official said they had already planned to construct two bridges over Dungsam Chu as part of the town's local area plan. And the recent flash flood has only further heightened the urgency. 60 million newton has been allocated for the two bridges. We do have a proposal uh, in this fiscal year. I think that was there uh, from right from the beginning of the plan, but uh, because of the manpower shortage, uh, somehow we could not mobilize. But now we have prioritized that uh, bridge is the, uh, the requirement. It's very important to have connectivity over uh, the primary school as well as uh, uh, the settlement. We want to open up the settlement uh, on the other part of the Dungsam Chula. Until constructions of the two bridges are complete, the Tomde is also planning to construct a belly bridge over Dungsam Chu for students to get across to the school. They said they are looking at the possibility of collecting unused or remaining belly bridge materials from other Zonkaks. The Tomde, however, does not have a separate budget allocated for the purpose. In the meantime, students will have to make do with the recently completed temporary bridge. For Kilomachu in Samuzonka, Sonomugen, BBS News. The Royal Civil Service Commission is currently reviewing career progression of civil servants in supervisory and support category. Such a move is to address the issue of civil servants remaining in same level for many years due to lack of career path. Career stagnation, according to the Commission, is a major issue faced by them. The career progression for the category is being reviewed based on the average age of the civil servants entering at various levels, number of years of service and the years spent at highest position level before superannuation. The occupation in the category comprises of technicians, nurses and administrative assistants among others. From many entry positions in civil service, 
40 positions that begin in supervisory and support category have career paths up to S1 and B5 position level only, which means stagnation occurs after 16 to 20 years of service. Uh, we are all aware that stagnation is one of the prominent issues that the civil service is currently facing, which is why we requ it requires us to address the issue to make the position attractive at all levels. If unresolved, it was found it would affect the delivery of public-related service. Mixing up of supervisory and support category with professional and management category created unnecessary confusion and issues for administration. It also affected proper human resource planning and management. The change is expected to come into effect next year. Following the change, the supervisory and support category is expected to have career path till P2. However, the progression will be categorized as SS4, SS3, SS2 and SS1. They will be given all the benefits equivalent to that of professional and management category. Chetan Dupchu, PBS News. Ever since it was constructed in 1973, hostels of Kunaka Higher Secondary School have not undergone any major renovation. As a result, the roofs of the hostels have started to leak, making it difficult for the students to live in, especially during monsoon. The need for renovation of the school's hostels was raised during the recent Songkhak Chokdu. Despite having a roof, it is as good as not having one. Students have to use buckets and other containers to hold the rainwater that leaks through the roof. The situation is same for both girls and boys hostel. The school authority informed us that they have raised the matter several times, but nothing has been done so far. We told them that there is no separate budget in the GEO allocated for schools. However, we agreed to raise the issue during the Zongkak Tsukdu. Other structures of the school like kitchen and toilets are also in need of maintenance. The school authority had tried filling up the leakage with cement but it was not effective. The Zongkak education officer said they are aware of the situation. However, their hands are tied as they do not have enough budget. They have also been receiving similar maintenance proposals from other schools in the Zongkak. <laughs> We proposed for budget during the current fiscal year. However, every year we are allocated with only 30% of the total budget proposed. So this time we got 5 million. But this has been allocated for construction of classrooms and teachers' quarters at Dashiding School and Warden's Quarter in Lekitang. <laughs> The issue will be forwarded to the Education Ministry and Gross National Happiness Commission for financial assistance. The Zongkak Education Officer will also meet with the school authority and compile a report about the problem. There are about 413 students using the school's boarding facility. For Chonidema in Punaka, Sonomongdi, PBS News. 679 government vehicles have neither renewed nor verified the documents with the Road Safety and Transport Authority. This was found out during RSTA's physical verification of such vehicles in May this year. The figure was revealed when over 2,500 government vehicles turned up for the physical verification of documents conducted by the RSTA. There are over 7,600 government vehicles registered with Road Safety and Transport Authority. The Director General of RSTA said if the remaining government vehicles are not verified within 15 September this year, it will be dealt as per the law. He said the RST will prepare a list of such vehicles and notify the respective ministries and agencies. Similar verification of vehicles will also be conducted for passenger buses and private vehicles. Meanwhile, of the total government vehicles registered, 209 were not found in the authorities' record. This, the Director General explained, was due to the mistake in the data migration as previously registration of vehicles was done manually. With cameraman Kenji String, Dikilhamo, PBS News. With youth refusing to accept polyandry marriage, the age-old practice among women in Merak and Sakten Georgs of Tashkang is sharply declining. 
Polyandry is a practice of women having more than one husband at the same time. In the past, most women in Merak and Sakhtin Gayoks practice polyandry where they get married to multiple husbands. The husbands are usually brothers. Polyandry is practiced mainly to avoid distribution of wealth and pasture land. It is also to increase the manpower in the family to look after different breeds of animals for livelihood. <laughs> When I was a child, I have seen a woman married to four husbands. And there were only a few women who were married to a single husband. The main reason, according to our elders, is because we depend on animals for livelihood, which requires more manpower. The tradition continues even today, but the practice is, however, on the decline now. 33-year-old Tichin Wangmo is one among few women who is married to more than one husband. She is married to two husbands who are brothers. And her mother-in-law is the only woman in the village who is married to three husbands currently. The main reason is because being a highlander, we need to rear animals. Initially, I was married to the elder brother, but then I had to look after my aging parents. So I had to marry the younger brother too, as there is no one to look after the animals. So far, there has been no problem with my marriage. Most youth are, however, against the polyandry tradition today, since most of them are exposed to education and modern facilities. The tradition is seen as an old-fashioned. The improvement in the living standard among the Highlanders is also contributing to the decline of the polyandry tradition. Our parents still want us to keep the tradition alive, but what youth like me think is different, so we cannot fulfill their wishes. Even if our parents make arrangements, the marriage does not last for long. Since I am working in an office and do not have to look after animals, it will be inconvenient for me to have two husbands. The divorce rate among the polyandry marriage has reportedly increased in recent years. Although there is no official figure, the increasing divorce rate among the polyandry marriage itself proves that the tradition is no longer popular among today's generation. But depending on individual needs and situation, few are still in favor of the tradition. Kampal for Pemanamge, Cheche, BBS News, Kanglo. Residents of Tapil village under Bomdaling Georg in Tashiangsi are still waiting for a farm road to reach their village, which was planned nearly a decade ago. The need to resume the road construction work was discussed during the recent Songkak Tsokdu. A survey was carried out in 2006 to construct a farm road from Bumdiling till Toprang in the 10th five-year plan. The work could not begin immediately since it took time to get the environment clearance from the National Environment Commission. Later in 2013, the GEOC received some budget to construct the road. The road was then constructed from Bumdiling till Pamadung. But in the following years, the Geok did not receive budget to continue the road construction works. Subsequently, the work has been kept on hold till now. This road would be beneficial, that's why we discussed the issue during the Sogdu. Since there were disputes among the farmers and also due to budget constraints, the work was stalled till now. But from now, with the expectations of getting through, we are again discussing it in the Sogdu.
The reason why the concerned authorities did not allocate the budget of clearing the route is because of security reasons. So now we are discussing the possibility of clearing the route till Tarpil since it will not harm anyone. Rather, it will benefit more. So that's why we discuss it in the Sogdu. The construction of the farm road from Pamadung to Toprang was kept on hold due to security reasons. But the Zonghok Sogdu is now proposing to construct the road to Tarpil village. To fulfill the hopes and dreams of the people, the Zongda and the Sogdu will submit the report to the concerned authorities and wait for a response. And the Sogdu also finalized that the people will be informed after we get an answer. If the proposal gets through, the farm road to Tarfil village will benefit more than 60 households. Currently, it takes around two and a half hours to reach Tarfil village on food from the nearest road point. Cheche, BBS News, Kowloon. Local leaders in Sarbang request the government to blacktop the Georg Center roads as soon as possible. They said none of the 12 Georg Center roads in Sarbang are blacktopped and the roads are in bad condition. Increasing number of vehicles uses the Georg roads. But it is never a pleasant ride. And during summer, this is how some of the Georg roads look like. Filled with mud and puddles, it takes hours to complete half an hour journey to the Georgs. Local leaders said it also affects the timely completion of the developmental activities in the Georgs. The issue was raised in the Dzongkak Tsogdu recently. It is also difficult for the farmers to market their produce when the roads are damaged by the rain water. People complain about the bad road condition. But when we recommended the Zonkok Tsogdu for black topping, we are told that plan is not there in this financial year. It means we are not getting a black topped road. I think to fulfill people's aspiration, it has become important for the government to make it a special plan to blacktop and to maintain the Georg roads at the earliest. The roads are old, so it is problem with no maintenance and blacktopping. Last year, the government said they have budget in the financial year 2014 to 2015, and the road will be blacktopped, but it was not. And today we are told that the plan is definitely in the next financial year. If the issue could be clarified, it will be easy for us to inform the people. The Department of Roads said they have plans to blacktop some 46 kilometers of roads in Singe, Gakiling, and four other Gewoks located across the Mao River in the financial year 2016 to 2017. The department also said the remaining Gewoks will also have black topped roads by that time. By the end of the 11th five year plan, the government plans to black top 201 Gewok Center roads. Black topping Gewok Center roads was one of the pledges of the government. Kampal for Fuba in Gelifo. Dikilamo, PBS News. Well, that's all we have for this week. Do join us again the next time. Until then, on behalf of the team, this is Sonomongdi saying goodbye.